Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Lee. You will not find any videos of myself during these lectures. Why? Because it is not about me, but the focus should be on the gospel. We hope that you had a good week, and I hope you are wearing your mask and social distancing during this crisis. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We are bringing you messages using the manuscripts which were the original writings and interpretation into the King James Bible. This will give each and every one of us a clear view and understanding of the Bible which was created with the wisdom of God to teach with clarity and understanding, not to confuse. As we look at the book of James chapter one, verse five through six, it teaches us if any lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who giveth to all men and women freely. So go with us now into another lecture where some are recorded live and some come directly from the desk of the pastor. Come follow us with your Bibles as we follow Christ. Today I'd like to focus a little bit on Mother's Day. Uh, the title of the sermon today is Mother's Day God given rights so as you can you and I can see and focus on how Satan tries to disrupt beautiful things that come about and cause controversy okay now today should have been a beautiful day to celebrate Mothers and what they do. Mothers who give their best to their children to raise them. But Satan has thrown a curveball in today's celebration with Roe versus Wade. And if you stop and you look and you think about it, it is something that is not and should not have to be discussed. Today is a sad day in this world on Mother's Day, as well for some a good and happy day that we would be entertaining a conversation of Roe versus Wade. Just from doing recent studies, recent research, I find that every individual has their own opinion. I find that every religion has its own option about this issue likewise. From being a pastor, I feel that no time has been taken to talk about how God feels about this issue and what has been written in the Word of God. Now, understanding this conclusion and coming to this conclusion when I find out that many, many religious groups have participated since this Roe versus Wade had been passed and they have uh, assisted in close to 12 million abortions. And these are religious churches, religious figures from Protestant to Jewish. We even have rabbis that have participated in it. Now, I want to say today that I want to bring up a few scriptures and present them to those that are listeners that you may subtract your selfishness, your demands from this topic and seek what God requires. Because when this life is over, the body goes back to the dust and we, the spirit, the soul, 
that is the real you and I will stand before the true and the living God and answer for the decisions that we made according to Wade versus Roe. Now, when we look at all the controversy that has been going on, I have not yet to hear one person say, what does the Bible say about this? What does God say about it? No one is yet to entertain that conversation. But I say to all, who are we as a creation to make a decision whether a life lives or dies unless the mother and the child's life is at threat? Listen, all the lives are already counted for from the first earth age. So it's not as if a life that just crept up and shouldn't be here and uh, we want to make a decision about that. But if we go back to the first earth age, we're living in the second earth age now. First earth age is when all individuals were created. All spirits that were, are created that live in earthly bodies at this specific time. Now, I believe that many people that are here today, men and women that has accomplished Many great things for the good of this world would not be here if the decision was not taken seriously. You would not be here. I would not be here. But somebody, whether it was the husband, the father, or the wife, or the mother, got together and made a decision on what they could do. Or what they should do. And when we think of the acts of abortion at this particular time, we find out that it's not something that just started in the 60s, but it's something that's been going on for decades and it was more or less hidden. Because of our actions in the creating of conception, more than anything, we being God's creation should be putting our minds in his hands to know right from wrong and exercise it accordingly. Just remember, life itself was not created to be modified according to the mistakes that we have made in life to make ourselves feel more comfortable and to live our life the way that we want. That's not the way it's supposed to be. And as you've noticed, most of the churches are empty where it was a time when the teaching of God was abroad and a lot of teaching was done as the, the infants were born right up from preschool, Sunday school to adult school. And the fear of God means a lot when it's put in individuals as they grow up and with even with me when I had ideas about doing various things it always came up my idea versus God's idea and that's what always put me in check and kept me where I needed to be today I want to talk about some scriptures that the Bible has presented and leave it up to you to decide on what you want to do in regards to Wade versus Row. Now, as we look at Psalms chapter 139, verse 13 through 24, David's writing a beautiful Psalms about the depth of life. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wroth in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance. David saying, Lord, your eyes saw my substance, yet being unperfect. 
And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. God knew that he was coming into this world. God knew that you and I were coming into this world and prepared everything thereof. And the books that you and I, our name is on them, that is ready to be written in, the things that we will do that are good, that are bad, and the accomplishments that we will make. Verse 17. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! I should count them that they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly. And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am not I grieve with those that rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. And if you are not acknowledging God and bringing him into the equation, then you are speaking against him and not acknowledging him and who he is. What does the Bible say about killing an in, uh, the innocent? It says, Cursed be, the, as, be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. That's in Psalms 106.38. And shed innocent blood, even blood of their sons and daughters, and pollute the land with blood. Now, God of course, wants to see all children live, and, and he has a vision for this. He says, children, now they're grown up, they're growing up. Obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on earth. Here we have the Lord is speaking through these writings, looking as a visionary of the growth of the child into adulthood and speaking to that child that that child will live a long, long life if he or she obeys the commandments. What does the Bible say about conception? In Genesis 2.24, we are told, Therefore men shall leave his father and mother and join to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Everyone say one flesh. One flesh. And that is the DNA of the male joining with the DNA of the female to become a new and holy, unique human being. God's for seeing it, God's inspiring the writer to write that. That he knows. Everyone say he knows. he knows. What does the Bible say about unborn babies? Deuteronomy 27, 25. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. Psalms 108. In the secret places do, doeth he murder the innocent. And we're seeing that now. Popping up all over. Innocent places doing this. In Psalms 106.38, and shed innocent blood, even blood of their sons and of their daughters, and pollute the land with blood. God will not hold any blameless for the deaths of innocent. You may think it's a great thing to do, to get around or whatever, and don't get me wrong, but there are people that lack knowledge. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And some have lack knowledge, not knowing much, not knowing about any of this. And there is a road of repentance back to God to ask for forgiveness of whatever might have been done. But if we don't acknowledge God regularly and keep him within our heart, then we cannot be shown the errors that we make. Does human life begin at conception? Life begins at fertilization with the embryo's conception. 
Development of the embryo begins at stage one when a sperm fertilizes an oosti and together they form a zygote. Human development begins after the union of male and female called gametes or germ cells during a process known as fertilization or conception. Now as we take a, a good look here about, we're going back to the Old Testament and the Old Testament, and I look at that as people respecting having a child and knowing that this is the role of God in their life. As we look at Hannah, she was the wife of Elkanah, Elkanah, and the mother of Samuel, who became a prominent prophet in ancient Israel. 1 Samuel 1 and 1 Samuel 2, 1 through 21. What did she do? When Hannah was childless, she turned to God for comfort. Hannah's husband had two wives. His other wife, Penenna, had a child. However, Hannah remained childless for a long time after her marriage. Penenna cruelly taunted her, but Hannah prayed to God for comfort. And she made a vow to God saying that if God, if you grant me a son, that I will give the child back to you by arranging for the child to serve at the temple. And we all know who this child was. This child was Samuel. And she held to her word because it was a precious thing for a, a mother to have a child. And it was seen as a bad thing when a woman or a mother was barren and could not have children. It was seen as a bad, bad thing. Who was Mary? She was a young Jewish woman and she was a virgin at the time she gave birth to Jesus, having conceived God's son miraculously or, or conceived God's seed miraculously, preparing her to have God's son. What did she do? Many, Mary humbly did God's will. She was engaged to Joseph when an angel appeared to her and announced that she would become pregnant and give birth to the long-awaited Messiah. She surrounded and allowed her life to be changed. And that's found in Luke 1, 26 through 33. She allowed it. She accepted it because she was chosen by God. And many must understand that many are chosen by God to do specific things like that as far as conception and having a child. Because that child, again, is going to do great things in most cases if brought up under the understanding of who God is. They're going to do great things. And when I look around and I look at this scripture, I look at me and think, well, what if I was decided that I was going to be an unwanted child, this pulpit would be empty. The, pool that, the, the pulpit that you are sitting in could be empty because someone decided that it wasn't important to have you. As we look at Proverbs 31, 10 through 12, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Now, when reading this, you must understand getting married doesn't mean everything's going to be okay. But before getting married, if one was taught how to seek a mate, their life would be a lot easier. And when I speak about seeking a mate, and, and I fall in the same category, seek a mate that goes to church, I was told, have to get married, have a family, and grow up. But that's not the hidden secret. 
The hidden secret is when we're seeking a mate, we want to seek a mate that loves God more than us. If that person loves God more than us, then that person is going to do unto us as God would have them to do. And that's how we have a a marriage made in heaven, as we were told. As we look at Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 6, verse 6 through 7, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently um, to thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou settest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So it is information, it is wisdom, it is knowledge that's being passed on from generation to generation. That the love of God, the love for his creation may continue to grow and be and put it in our children. Titus chapter 2 verse 4 through 5. Mothers of value that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So we have a mode that we are in To the glory of God. Everyone say to the glory of God. God. Not to glory of man. Not through man's traditions. But Lord how am I pleasing you? And and it's certain uh, questions that come up in our minds. That we often too many times forget to say Lord what's your thoughts on this? What do you say about this? And when we do that we're, we're going to open up the truth, the word of God, and learn about what God expects of us. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. When you're looking around and you're trying to find things to get into, things to do, other than reading the word, other than asking God to help you through the day when you wake up in the morning, give you answers to your uh, challenges that day, And when controversy comes up on any level, Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that I may approach it by your word and by by your inspiration to those who have written it. Amen. Father, today we honor you and thank you for just allowing us To always have an option. No matter what's going on in the world, no matter what challenges comes our way, we have an option, and the option is you. To seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of your righteousness. And allow your Holy Spirit to minister truth to us. Though it may be quick sometime, though it may be gradual, Give us the patience to wait upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us on the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We encourage you to have a conversation with God on a daily basis. Not many people take the time out of their schedule to do so. This ministry encourages everyone to receive Jesus Christ into their life as Lord and Savior. You may ask, how do I receive him? Just talk to him, confessing to him as being a sinner and how much you need him. Asking Jesus into your heart, which is your mind, and in doing so, we then have a covenant with God that when we repent and ask forgiveness for any of our sins that we all commit regularly, God is justified to forgive us of our sins. Let me say that the most challenging moment we will face in our life 
is receiving that forgiveness that God provides. You may not feel comfortable the first time around, but practice makes perfect. Knowing that someone loves you deeply as God Almighty. He himself has proven by bringing his only begotten son to take on our sins as the last sacrifice for mankind to absorb all of the sins of mankind that we all commit and still having the power to forgive us. We love you and look forward to meeting with you and sharing the next message. Soon as I stopped worrying Worrying how the story ends When I let go and I let God I let God have his way That's when things start happening When I stop looking at back then when I let go and I let God, I let God have His way. Mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to fall asleep. There was so much on my mind, searching for that peace, but the peace I could not find. Oh, but then I, I kneeled down to pray I was praying, help me please Then he said, you don't have to cry Cause I'll supply all your needs Let go. Oh, let go. Let go. And just let God. Let go. Oh.